All right, guys, what's going on? We've got the 12th War of Season 43, and we rematched another one of the top two alliances this last season, and that is GT40. Um, you know, we have a lot of friends in there, but we wanted to win just based on the leaderboard. We thought we had a shot at podium if we did win, and then um, us, GT, and Salty would be the top three alliances. Um, also, speaking of GT40, um, one of our alliance members is basically married to one of the, or two of them actually, are married to a couple of the guys in GT40. And, um, Jen, who's in my alliance, and Cody's, who's in GT40, daughter, made my thumbnail for this video and for the rewards opening. So, if you guys like the thumbnail, hit up Jen or Cody online. And, you know, maybe, maybe their daughter will hook you up with a thumbnail too. But, um, yeah, so this is, you know, probably one of the most important wars of the season if we win. Good chance we get top three if we lose. Uh, definitely not getting top three. So, you know, the plan for this war was to boost as big as humanly possible. Um, you know... In Vuln, like I think I told the people in my battle group, uh, do not post a death because uh, we all post our deaths, our death videos. I said, you know, don't don't post a death uh, if you're not running an invulnerability boost. Um, you know, we need to like be trying to win. Like this isn't the the war to be trying to conserve your your boosts for next season. So, um, yeah, I led by example. I think I had an Invulmon for every single fight. I just push opponents to special threes. I don't really care. Um, so yeah, this is just, you know, normal path seven. I don't think I've seen Man-Thing here before. I'm not, I think he's probably just here as like a, a path split. Maybe if people are trying to run like Apocalypse or something for that Jabari. Um, but yeah, it's not not a big deal at all. Um, I just, I don't really want him throwing specials. If I can help it, um, I just want to push him, I guess push him red, that, that's what I ended up doing. Um, but yeah, I like my fights fast. I like to, you know, get them over with. The special three didn't exactly help, but um, yeah. Okay, so moving on here in a second. I'm gonna be on path two in section two. So there's an interesting interaction with buff immune champions and neutralizers where basically if, so if, if you have a neutralize on you and you use like dexterity or something against Rintra, it normally feeds his mystical charges um, against like you know, Wiccan or something. Um, if you have a neutralize on you and you start dexing to beta special, um, you will uh, get incinerated. So I tested in a duel first. Obviously you can't recreate, um, you know, drip feed placebo or whatever in a duel. But, um, you know, I was pretty consistently, um, you know, feeding his abilities by using dexterity. You can see right there I did. But I guess that the drip feed doesn't count. Um, but I didn't realize that in this fight. So I am, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm, I'm just kind of trying to manage his mystical charges um, just based on like what I know of his abilities. And also Titania has like a really aggressive play style where you kind of want to force your opponent into the corner and just spam heavies against them after your special three. But against Rintra, you really don't want to have him in the corner. Um, he gains his mystical charges a lot faster. He goes like unstoppable and unblockable and he puts a bunch of ruptures on you. Um, so I really made this fight a lot longer and more complicated than it needed to be just by throwing all these stupid heavy attacks. Here I finally am just like, you know what? I'm gonna go for a special two. I'm kind of sick of being in this fight. I feel like it's taking forever, which to be fair it was. And here we go, just one more special two should do it. Um, yeah. And then um, my next fight here is going to be a spot on EMP modification. I've seen him there a few times, I don't, um, 
I don't know why people place him there. There might be like an interaction that I'm missing. And originally I was gonna take him with Titania, but um, another officer in my alliance um, crossed him. Like we post our, our fight plans and stuff before we uh, post them in our battle groups. And he basically said like, I think that, that might be a little bit long and you know, spots, um, like spot gain could get kind of out of control in a longer fight. So I think Omega Red might be better. So I decided to go with that. I'm gonna go ahead and use Omega Red here. And I just don't want him throwing a special attack. If he does, then, you know, I'll survive it. But in a perfect world, I would like him to not be throwing special attacks. And he was super cooperative. 30 second fight. Um, huge contrast from that uh, Rentra fight, which I made way longer than it needed to be. Um, okay, and then last fight for me of this war is gonna be this Baron Zemo. So Baron Zemo is here because if you use a champion that's immune, that's immune to like the node interactions here. So if you use a champion like Hulkling or like Gallon or something, someone who can't have their power drained by the node, um, he's going to gain a ton of furies and he can already crit you through the block, like just on his, on his base abilities. But um, if you use a champion like, you know, that gets around the node somehow, um, he is going to get a ton of furies and you are going to die if you take one hit in the block. So I am just gonna use Omega Red, Invuln, um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. This, it's kind of a nothing fight with Omega Red. The only thing that sucks about using Omega Red for Baron Zemo is that you can't lock in your spores because he'll just cleanse it. Um, but yeah, so we we were winning this war for most of the most of the war. I think we had like ten fights left, and I did make a planning error. I told somebody to they they went with tech bands against us, which was really smart. Um, because all of the normal like tech champions were banned, I assigned a Shuri to a Storm Pyramid X on, um, oh, what is that node? It's like uh, polka dot power and stun reflection. So I assigned a Shuri there and I told the person to use a PS1 so they could get their armor faster. Um, but without an invuln, that fight was just too dangerous. They ended up dying and yeah, so I feel really guilty about that. We did not land in top three, um, even though our only losses were, we, we, we lost four times this season, um, and all four were to either GT40 or Salty. So super frustrating. Hopefully Kabam does something. I know they did some sort of like update to their matchmaking system, and I hope that it solves the issue of you know, these rematches, because the way it stands right now, if you play well in the beginning of the season, um, you are going to end up rematching good alliances. If you play poorly in the beginning of the season, then you're going to get a re really easy, like, second half of your season, um, and you're probably not going to have to match um, any of the really difficult alliances. So yeah, hopefully they figure that out. I've offered some feedback and suggestions. I'm not sure um, if it'll be taken, probably not, but either way, thank you guys so much for watching and I will have the rewards video up for you shortly. All right, thank you.